All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at 1972 AB5. So that's number five on the AP calculus exam from 1972, which was a really long time ago. Um, and the reason we're looking at it is because part B here is sort of a related rates type question. Um, so I'm going to do A and B. Uh, I'm going to do part A, but really I'm interested in part B. So uh, this is a pretty, part A is like as straightforward as it gets. I don't know why that two is there but we need to find dy dx and uh, also the second derivative. So uh, dy dx, this is part a, is, uh, this is a chain rule problem. So it's two e to the cosine of x times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And there you go, that's, <laughs> that's dy dx. Uh, I mean, you get like a rewrite, I, I would probably rewrite it negative two sine of x e to the cosine of x. But like, that's it. Uh, let's find the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be first, which I'm going to treat as negative 2 sine of x, derivative of the second. So the derivative of e to the um, cosine of x, we know is negative sine of x e to the cosine of x, because we just found that, right? I mean, disregard the two, the derivative of e to the cosine of x is this. So I'm going to say times negative sine of x e to the cosine of x. So that's first derivative of the second plus second, which is e to the cosine of x, derivative of the first. The derivative of negative two sine of x is negative two cosine of x. So I don't know how much simplifying you, well, you don't have to do any simplifying actually, um, but I think it looks gross. So I'm gonna simplify it at least a little bit, but you don't need to. And like, you don't need to fact, I don't know. I'm gonna factor, am I? I'm gonna not, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to fight that urge. It's a, it's tough though. I want to take out two e to the cosine of x, which actually I might do because I feel like this has provided me with more clarity on, on how it will go. It's like, I, I didn't wanna do it when I thought, oh, I might mess it up. But now I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that I won't mess it up. I'm going to take out 2e to the cosine of x. And then uh, what am I left with? I'm left with sine squared of x minus cosine of x. I mean, that looks nicer. You don't have to do anything with it, so it doesn't matter. I don't know, multiple choice, you'd probably have to match that, but this is definitely not multiple choice, so who cares? All right. If x and y both vary with time, so both x and y are functions of t and y increases at a steady rate of five units per second. So that's telling us that dy dt is equal to five, I don't know, units per second. Then at what rate is x changing when x is equal to pi over two? Okay, so when at, we wanna find dx dt. So we're finding, find dx dt, this is essentially the question. Find dx dt given that y equals 2e to the cosine of x. Uh, x is equal to pi over 2. And dy dt is equal to 5 units per second. But I don't typically write that as I go. Um, so that's what we're given. All right. So uh, I think there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm going to do it uh, the way that I think I would. I would find the derivative with respect to time of the whole thing. So I'm, I'm going to pretend I never did A. I'm just going to say d dt of y is equal to d dt of 2e to the cosine of x. So it's going to be dy dt is equal to 2e to the cosine of x times the negative sine of x times dx dt. Okay, so dy, I know dy dt, that's five. So I'm gonna be able to sim, sub this in. dy dt is five. I know that x is pi over two. So that'll be pi over two, that'll be pi over two. And I'm trying to find dx dt. That's the only thing I don't know in there. All right, so I'm gonna have five is equal to 2e to the cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 
um, times the negative sine. Oh, sine of pi over two is one, so just times negative one times dx dt. So e to the zero is one. So I believe, whoops, I believe that dx dt is going to be negative five halves units per second. All right, I think that that is one way we could solve this. And that's the way I probably would have solved it. Because like, um, it's really straightforward and uh, that's just the way I think of these things. The other way you could have done it, so I'm gonna import my answer here. Uh, this, I'm gonna steal dx dt, which actually we, we ended up, not dx, dy dx. So we could have done, this is an alternative approach that I think, I think most people would not have done. Um, but you never know. So dy dx is equal to this. Well, dy dx is actually um, dy dt over, so it's dy dt times dt dx is dy dx by the chain rule. So maybe I should write that. Uh, all right, here we go. So dy dt, no, dy dx is dy dt times dt dx, so, which is the same as dy dt over dx dt. So if that's equal to negative two sine of x e to the cosine of x, then, um, you know, we're like, we're kind of like basically in the same spot. Uh, so this is, I'm just showing you this. I don't think I would do it, but it's definitely the case that this is true. This is, this is a weird, it's not really that weird, but it's a straight chain rule application. And if you're in Calc BC and you're currently reviewing, like if you've done parametrics, this will feel very parametric to you, right? Because um, dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. We do that with parametrics all the time. If you're in Calc AB, uh, no, no, no problem doing this potentially, but like this got the answer. So I think the final answer is negative five halves units per second. That's all of 1972 AB5. All right, so uh, I hope you found this helpful and uh, good luck.